question six on page one, two, two. The first bit I did in class, but just to remind you again, if you have a vector ai plus bj, and you have another vector uh, ci plus dj, if you are told that those two lines, even though the way I've drawn them, they don't look at right angles, if you are told that they are the two lines are at right angles to each other, that means the, that means that if you get the slope of one line multiplied by the slope of the other, you get minus one. Okay? So the slope of that line is B over A. The slope of that line is D over C. Okay? So what we're saying is if those two lines are perpendicular, then B over A multiplied by d over c is equal to minus 1, giving you tops by tops, bd over ac is equal to minus 1, Multi multiply across by ac, giving you bd is equal to minus ac, or bd plus ac is equal to 0. Now that's important. So if two vectors are at right angles to each other, what we're saying is the product of their two vertical vectors plus the product of their two horizontal vectors have to give you zero. Now we could have maybe used that in question five as well, now that I think about it. But anyhow, also just to draw your attention again that the slope of a line is also the tan of the angle that the line makes with the x-axis. Okay, that's the first bit. And I think we will use that in the second bit. So the second bit, basically, you have a sphere and another sphere. This one is of mass 2m and this one is of mass m. This one is travelling with a velocity v um, and at an angle theta. But they told us that the cosine of theta, theta is the angle whose cosine is 3 over 7. So this side must be the square root of 7 squared minus 3 squared. So the square root of 40, which is 2 root 10. Okay. So now from that we can tell that the sine of theta is 2 root 10 over 7. We already know the cosine of theta is 3 over 7. Okay, so the cosine of theta we know is 3 over 7. Right, let's rub that out. Okay, so now we know that this is V cosine theta, so V times 3 over 7, or 3 over 7 times V. This is v sine theta, so that is 2 v root 10 over 7. The velocities in the perpendicular, actually, sorry, now I'm going to rub this axis just in the way. Right, this one we're told is going at velocity 0 in this direction and minus u in this direction. So we know that the velocities perpendicular to the line of centres don't change, so this is 2 v root 10 over 7, and this one is zero. Call this y, call this x. Okay. Right, so we'll do our normal first. Uh, we are told that the uh, velocity afterwards is perpendicular to the velocity beforehand, or that they move off. Uh, it's deflected through an angle of 90 degrees. So in other words, this line is perpendicular to this line when we, if we drew it out properly. We just said if two, ve two vectors are perpendicular to each other, then the product of their, uh, x, their uh, horizontal uh, components, so in other words, x multiplied by 3v over 7, plus the product of their verticals, which is 2v root 10 over 7 by 2v root 10 over 7. So 2v root 10 by 2v root 10 is... 4v squared times 10, so that's uh, 4, yeah, root 4, v squared root 40, by 40, sorry, not root 40, over 49, okay? Hopefully you'll see that that's top by top, bottom by bottom, is equal to 0. That gives us 3vx over 7 is equal to 40 v squared over 49 and uh, 3 oops, sorry no, the three, 3 over 7 is equal to 40 v squared over 49 um, so we get uh, 7 divides in multiply by 7 here multiply by 7 here and we get a 7 
divide by 3. So we get, uh, sorry, divide by V as well. And we get X is equal to 40 V. And we divide by 3, so we get over 21 instead of over 7. Okay, that's important. So X is equal to 40 V over 21. Now I could just put that straight in here. Or I could just do my normal principle of conservation of momentum, uh, Newton's experimental law, figure out a relationship between x and uh, v, and then use this information as well. So I think I'll do the normal. So the principle of conservation of momentum, 2m times 3v over 7, 2m times 3v over 7, plus, this is the momentum before, plus m times minus u, which becomes minus mu, is equal to the momentum afterwards, which is 2m times x plus m times y. Your m's divide out, and we get 6v over 7 minus u is equal to 2x plus y. Multiply across by 7, 6v minus 7u is equal to 14x plus 7y. That's one equation. Uh, Newton's experimental law, x minus y is equal to minus e, and e we're given as being 3 quarters. Uh, x minus y is minus e times 3 over 7, 3v over 7, minus minus u, which is plus u. Okay, that gives you um, x minus y is equal to minus 9v over 28, plus, oops, sorry, minus 3u over 4. Just multiplying out the brackets. Multiply across by 28, and we get 28x minus 28y is equal to minus 9v minus uh, 21u. Okay, because we're multiplying by 28, so 4 goes into 28 seven times. Okay, that's our second equation. Okay, so now I'm going to rub this out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we have, uh, we're going to, so we have a 14x and a 7y. We want to get a, an expression for x in terms of v and u. Okay, and then we have an expression for x here in terms of v. So we will combine those. So we need to get rid of the y's from these two equations. So if I multiply this y by 4, I will get 28y. So multiply all of this equation by 4. 24v minus 28u is equal to 56x plus 28y. 28x minus 28y is equal to minus 9v minus 21 you. Our y is add to 0, we get 84x is equal to uh, 15v minus 49u. So we have uh, x is equal to 15v minus 49u divided by 84, which is equal to, from the first bit, 40v over 21. Now we could have just subbed that in at the start and used that instead of x as well. I just wanted to not use as many fractions. Okay, well we know 21 goes, if we multiply this side by 21, or actually if we multiply by 84, okay, so if we multiply both sides by 84, we will get 15v minus 49u is equal to, and if you multiply this by 84, 21 goes into 84 four times. So that becomes 160 uh, v. Actually, sorry, x was minus 40 v over 21, if I remember. I think I took that down wrong. So that's a minus. Okay, uh, so what are we left with then if we bring this over? Well, or if you bring this over, we've got minus 49 u is equal to minus 175 v. Okay. So u is equal to 175v over 49. Uh, and if, if you divide by, oh, sorry, I think it was v we wanted. So v is equal to 
uh, minus 49u over minus 175 or 49u over 175. 7 into that goes 7, 7 into that goes 25. So v is equal to 7u over 25. Okay, so just I think I took that down onto the x is equal to minus 40v over 21. 